In Luke chapter 16, verse 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Elijah, which was laid at the gate full of sores, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And in verse 22 it says, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou... In thy lifetime receivest thou good things, and likewise lies up evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would ascend him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they should come unto this place of torment. And Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they would repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you, Lord, for your blessings on us. Again, for allowing us to be back into your house as all the prayer requests that's been made here today. We thank you for hearing and answering prayer. And thank you for the opportunity you give us and also the call to come to the throne of grace and let our requests be made known unto you. Again, we pray, Father, that the Holy Ghost would move in the midst of this service here today. We pray that people be helped. For someone here lost today, we pray the Holy Spirit of God would convict them and draw them with a salvation drawing that they might be saved before it's eternally too late. Again, we pray, God, you would just bless, Lord, uh, the reading of your word and everything that's said and done, that Jesus Christ would be exalted and be magnified and he would be lifted up in the midst of this service here today, in Jesus' name, amen, and you may be seated. Now, from the Gospel of Luke chapter 16, like I said, probably very familiar verses of Scripture should be from here, but I guarantee you there are very, a lot of verses not being preached in a lot of churches in the days that we're living in. And, uh, but, and I have preached from this uh, verses of Scripture on different occasions, and, but today I want to preach on the thought of it from here to eternity. From here to eternity. Now, thinking on that thought of from here to eternity, we find today represents a crossroads. And when we think about this crossroads uh, of life for some people that may be in this room and for all of us in this world in churches today uh, to make a decision, you have been afforded. We find an opportunity to gather yourself in the house of God May we count it a blessing and a privilege to say it's good to be in the house of the Lord and God has allowed us to do so. Amen. And to hear his word. Amen. To hear us to hear the word of God. And we find if you respond to his word, we find as the spirit of God leads you to do so. <clears throat> and, the, and we find that the spirit of God will lead us to make a decision. Always does. Amen. If you're lost here today, never been saved, he'll lead you to make a decision for Christ. Amen. And draw you to make a decision for Christ. If you're saved, he'll lead you to make a commitment to Christ and to follow God in the Word of God. So we find this day can be a beginning of a new life, amen, uh, for you here today. We find uh, a new start with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Now, when we think about these scriptures, amen, we find this passage concerns a rich man. We find, as we read here, and a poor man. We find this rich man uh, was lost. And, and when he died, the Bible says here in Luke that he went to hell. 
And we find also, we find the poor man was a believer. And we find the Bible tells us here when he died that he was taken to paradise. Now, in this account here, we find drives home the truth that there are only two possible, possible ways or di uh, directions, may I say, available to mankind when they leave this world. There's only two ways to go. We find now not everyone believes this. We find <clears throat> the atheist, amen, that de denies the existence of a literal heaven or a literal hell. We find the Jehovah's Witness believes that the grave is hell. We find the Mormons believe hell or believe in a hell, but he believes in the end everyone will be saved, including those in hell. But Revelation 20 verse 14 tells me that death and hell shall be delivered up and cast into the lake of fire. We find the seventh day at Venice believe that the lost man go to hell. Amen. Lost people die and go to hell, but they immediately are, are burned up like the broom sage is. We find, and there are many other beliefs along the maps, amen, when it comes to eternity. But we find what the truth is is what the Word of God says. People have a lot of beliefs, and they have a lot of ideas, and a, a lot of religion, but what the Word of God says is what matters. So we find here, therefore, by this many different things, we find most religions and cults approach this passage as it being nothing no more than a parable. We find, or oh, maybe just a, a sad story to teach a, a powerful truth. However, the word of God is clear, this is no parable. I mean, matter of fact, when he spoke a parable, he said he spoke this parable unto them. Here he said a certain rich man, and then he talked about Lazarus laying at his door, and he called names. We find here, so this is not a parable. This is a bold, clear warning the Word of God tells us for people to turn from their sins and be saved. We find also there's a hell for the lost person and there's a heaven for the saved person. Amen. We find uh, which place you go will, will be determined when you die. Amen. Uh, what determines it is what you do with Jesus Christ while you're here in this world. We find this passage is one of contrast. When we think of this passage, we find it pictures, uh, is, uh, is painted here for us in this picture we find is some of the differences between a lost man and a saved man. And what a difference it is. We find there are three primary areas where these contrasts are plainly visible. We find, now, preach on this thought uh, from here to eternity. Now, think about, don't you keep that in mind, from here to eternity. We find now in Luke chapter 16, when we look at these scriptures, 19 through 21, we find the contrast in their earthly experience. We find one man lived a bountiful life. And we find the other man lived a burdened life. The Bible plainly tells us this. We find now the man that lived a bountiful life, this verse, amen, tells us that the rich man enjoyed the best that life had to offer. I think he had everything that he wanted in this life. He lived for himself, the Bible tells us. And we find with no thought for the needs of his fellow man. He could care less for anybody else. All he cared about was for himself. Man, that feels like a whole lot of people I see around today. I mean, they don't care about anybody else. All they care is about themselves. Amen. With no thought, for no need for fellow man. And we find, and he was his own man, the Bible tells us. We find him just uh, enjoying life, we find, to the full. We find as he was enjoying it to the full, we find it appears he was living for the now. Boy, ain't that about like it is there. A lot of people just living for the now, amen, with no thought for future at all, amen. Amen. When I say that, I mean for eternal future. I'm talking about leaving this world. I'm not talking about living for the now with no thought of things of tomorrow or this thing. But then again, the Bible does tell us in one sense, it says in one place, amen, for the eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you die. Amen. For the, what their thought pattern is, is they're living for the now. Amen. So we find even after this death, this man's death, we find he was still self-centered. We find in verse 24, the word of God reads this. And he cried and said, Father Abraham. 
Now, I want you to recognize when he does say Father Abraham, amen, Abraham being the father of the Jews, amen, and they thought that they were all right just because they were born, amen, under Abraham. Amen. In other words, they didn't have to have faith in God, didn't have to trust God, didn't have to have trust in. Amen to that. But they thought, well, that just made them all right. A whole lot of thought they was just going to be grafted in. That'd be the same thing as you say, well, my grandpa was a Christian, my grandma was a Christian, my mom and daddy was a Christian. Amen. So therefore, I'll go to heaven. Hey, not so. Amen. You got to be a Christian yourself. The Bible says you must be born again. Amen. Amen. So we find you can't go in off, off the bridge's leg, amen, of, of a relative, amen, of yours. But we find he said, have mercy on me and send Elijah that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Now we find that he cared only for himself and not for the millions that were down there with him. Amen. In other words, other words, he didn't say, now we are tormented down here. Hey, we are suffering down here. I mean, people are all over the place. Some been here suffering longer than I have. No, 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 no. All he cared about was for himself. That's all he thought about at that time, that somebody would just help him out at that time. As a matter of fact, he even called upon the one sin that he cared nothing for when he laid at his door. Uh, he said, sin Lazar. Amen. <laughs> but we find those ones take note of something. There's nothing wrong with having money and material things. I want you to know that. There's nothing wrong with those things. Just being rich does not automatically condemn a person to hell. A lot of times people think, well, if they're going to get rich, amen, they're going to go to hell. Not necessarily. Amen. There's some rich people, no doubt, that love God, know the Lord Jesus Christ, trust God, amen, and they favor the things of God. But Jesus did indicate that a life lived in dependence upon material riches, amen, would end up in hell. But people who live in that manner, matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 through 26, we find there the account of a rich young ruler. The Bible tells us, I mean, that he came running to Jesus and desired what he must do to inherit eternal life. Now, uh, him coming to him, and Jesus gave him a list of commandments, and, and when he gave him those commandments, and he said, now, these things have I kept from my youth up. He said, okay, and he didn't deny that. Amen. So then he said, then I'll tell you what you do. He wanted to get right to the heart of the problem. Amen. Where the matter was, and you know the heart of the problem is the heart anyway. And we find there that he told him, he said, sell that which you have, give to the poor, and follow me. And now he said, now that's a hard saying. And the Bible says that he turned and went away. In other words, uh, he lived for his material possessions. Amen. He thought more of his material possessions than he did God. So we find here, looking at that, the Bible tells us in Timothy that those who have much riches in this world, amen, error from the faith. We find that Jesus did indicate that material riches or depending upon them could cause a person, more likely depending upon them, will cause a person to die and go to hell. Amen. Not because they have them, but because the material things have them. Amen. We find now the rich man pictures a person who cares only for himself. We find that's very well seen. He does not care about God. We find he does not care about God's word. Amen. He don't care about anything to do with God. Amen. We find he had, amen, what he would, um, what lives have had. We find that he didn't care anything about lives. If he had it, he would have ministered to lives. Amen. So he cared nothing. If he had cared about God's word or cared about God, he would have ministered unto him. Now, we find here one man, we find, we find he lived a bountiful life. Now, we find the other man lived a burden life. Now, the contrast between, between them two here on this earth. While the rich man prospered, Lazarus suffered daily. Uh, we find he did not have the riches of this world. We find here that he could not afford medical treatment for his ailments. We find he could not even afford food to eat to put on his table. We find the Bible tells us that his only friend appeared to be the dog, amen, which came and licked his sores. And I got thinking about that dog. I said, now why was that dog around out there the rich man's? That might have been the rich man's dog. Amen. I thought, well, the dog might have licked the man's sores thinking the whole time, I know how you feel. He won't feed me either.